super fresh from that TV studio, still got his makeup on, uh, but you were the rank outsider. But it seems to me you're coming up on the inside. Why do you think that is? Well, Esther, it's, uh, it's, 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 really, it's really up to you. I mean, I, I take my example from you two. You've always been extremely frank and honest, and that's one of the reasons why your viewers love listening to you and watching your show. And I'm trying to do the same thing. So honesty. Well, I think we've got to be frank with people, don't you? I mean, I think, you know, there's been too much beating around the bush in many areas. And I think just being absolutely frank with where we see the situation is, is, is what our job is, right? I mean, we're, we're here to be absolutely clear with people and then to offer leadership and to offer uh, the, the solutions to fix the problems that we face. You uh, were judged the winner of last night's contest when the opinion poll came out straight afterwards. How, how do you think the other four candidates performed? Uh, you know, in different ways, I thought rather well, actually. I thought Rishi was all over the detail. I thought Kemi made her points extremely clearly. I thought it was perfectly clear that Penny knew what, was, you know, knew what she was on about and was explaining her policies and her issues well. And Liz made a very good case for why she was so important in government for the last 10 years. I think, you know, frankly, I think that, that demonstrates a huge depth of talent in the Conservative Party and why Keir Starmer should be very worried. Do you think the, the debates clearly had an impact on the viewers? Do you think they have any impact on Conservative MPs? But you can tell me that. I don't know. It's up to you, Philip. Well, you'll have, been, you, you know, you'll, be, you'll have been speaking to your colleagues. You know, we speak to a few. You'll have been speaking to them all. So, I mean, do you think, were people waiting? Did people say to you, we want to see how the debates go? We, we, might, we might look again how we vote I mean, on that basis. You and I both know that we know each other rather well from before. I mean, we've, known, we've been friends for, what, seven years now? Something like that, eight years. I mean, we know each other pretty well. And... You know, it's certainly true that we uh, judge each other a little bit off how we think somebody's going to be able to win an election and champion a cause. Of course we do. But we also know each other pretty well, right? I mean, you know, you know what, you, you know what I'm like, right? I mean, you've known me for a number of years. So I think there'll be a little bit of movement. So you try to say nobody called you up and said, we're definitely going to be voting for you next week. And that's one or two. One or two may have said, uh, may have been very nice, but, you know. Now, people will have said it seems a bit light on policy. This person's coming in as the prime minister. Is there any policies you'd like to announce now? Well, you know what I'm championing. I'm championing um, policing. And one of the things I'm championing is fraud and crime, uh, cybercrime. But I have to say, I've just been looking with Philip. Forgive me. Am I allowed to? You go for it. Well, I've just been looking at this Rochdale grooming gang thing. And I have to say what with Telford going on today and that story going on there, it's absolutely outrageous. It is completely disgraceful. And what we've got to do is we've got to call out this horrific crime going on in our midst, and we've got to be absolutely clear about what's going on. Now, um, obviously, uh, the person who finished uh, that was bottom at the last time, sometimes their vote gets squeezed and they get pressure to stand down and all the rest of it. Can you guarantee that when we come to vote on Monday at 5 o'clock, your name will definitely be on the ballot paper and you won't have... You won't have... You'll see my name there, Philip. Whether or not you choose to tick, it'll be up to you, but it'll be, you'll see my name there. And because you know, I've been always really clear about this. You know, we've always believed, the three of us have always believed that politics is public service, right? I mean, that's why we're here. That's what we're doing it for. We're here to champion ideas, to defend our communities, to defend Britain, to champion conservative values and to make sure Labour's incredibly negative brand of socialism never gets anywhere near government. And so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing exactly that. I will put my, forward, my name forward again on Monday. It'll be up to you two and for 350, what is it, is? 355. in total, I think. Yeah, exactly. So 355, given the three of us. I, I know who I'm voting for. <laughs> <case you're wondering. laughs> when you say that, have, if, if you were, if you, and I, you know, I, I, we all wish you well, but if you, if you did drop out, have you decided who you I would haven't. support in, no, the, I haven't. in the later rounds of the contest? No? no, I haven't made that decision yet. And I haven't made that decision because I've got really good friends who are running. Um, Kemi is a personal friend. I mean, a really close personal friend. I think she's an amazing woman. Rishi and I were elected on the same day and we've been good mates since we were elected. Liz and I have worked together on foreign affairs now for about a year. And, you know, I respect her very, very highly. And Penny has been an amazing Royal Naval Reservist. And, you know, uh, I've just switched from the... Uh, army to the Royal Naval Reserve, you know, I owe her a little bit of loyalty there too. So, you know, each of them has huge... It all sounds loyalty. very cosy, doesn't it? Oh, you know, it all yes, sounds... Well, yeah, but in a way, you're still competing against each other. So obviously you're very cosy, but what is your differential then? Why are you different from all the others and why would you say, vote for me? Because at the moment, it just seems like you're all going to be leading the country together. <laughs> yes, the, reason, the reason I'm asking for, for it is because I think the good people of Tatton and Shipley are going to be looking at us in whenever it is, two years' time, and they're going to be asking, what have you done for us? What have you, what have you brought to us? And what are you going to change? 
And we've been through a really difficult time. You don't need me to tell you this. You, you, you keep talking about it here on your show. You know, you have seen that, you know, high streets, this is your campaign. The high streets are struggling. We've seen that in many places in the UK, people who feel left behind and levelling up hasn't delivered as much as it should. And so what we need to do is we need to demonstrate that every now and again, you need a clean start. And what you do is you restart from that position. And I think it is... So in your first couple of days in office because yeah. we know what's happening, yeah. and, you, and I know, obviously, the campaigns have run. Your first couple of days in office, Makes what are difference. you going to do? What's your first thing? You're sitting at your desk. First thing you're going to do? Well, the first thing to do is to uh, drop the national insurance rise. As you know, we didn't vote for it. I think I'm right in saying the three of us didn't vote for it. There weren't, there weren't that many people in our lobby. I, I, think, we could, I think we remember that. But We're used to that, Tom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, well, we've, been, am. we've been together a few more times than I would have thought when I first got elected, but we have been together a few more times. Um, so, look, you know, the national insurance rise has got to go. So that's Tax number office, one. Right. That will you, that's what you'll do, Straight number away, one. Right. The second one has got to be we've got to bring down fuel. So I've, I've spoken about 10 pence off fuel. Uh, on the fuel duty, because you know that is not just a tax on you know people travelling. It's actually a tax on jobs. It's a tax on resupplying shops. It's a tax on deliveries. It's a tax on you know it's a tax on everybody, right? So what we've got to do is we've got to make that easier to deal with and you know knock off some of the costs. And then of course what I'm going to be talking about is a new deal for Britain. Now this is going to take a bit of work. So this is not this is not going to be announced on day one, but it's going to be started on day one. Because we really need that new deal for Britain to do levelling up, to fix high streets, to actually invest in communities around the country. You know, not just the north of England, by the way. This isn't just the northern powerhouse. I know, I know I'm speaking to two northern MPs, but you'll forgive me. There are places in the rest of the country that are left behind as well. And the other thing is A&E targets. Look, A&E and referral target at four hours. We need to get it back. It's been since 2015, you know, since when I was elected, since we hit it. We need to get it back. We need to make sure it delivers because it's about making sure people are safe at home People are able to see their doctors on time and in the right way that they need. So you were, you were pretty scathing about Boris Johnson last night and his, and his uh, honesty. Uh, but am I right in thinking from what you've said that you would be sticking fairly closely to the 2019 manifesto yes. on which Boris Johnson was elected? Yes, you are. You are right in that. That's exactly what I do. And by the way, some of the other things I'd be sticking to and making sure we delivered is Brexit. Because what... Boris has done is he's got most of Brexit done. Let's be honest, there's Northern Ireland still, and that's a really big issue. Let's not kid ourselves that that's going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. So we're going to need to do two things. The first thing is we've got to pass the Northern Ireland Protocol Bill, which you know, we've all supported. The next thing we've got to do is we've got to make sure that we change the way these negotiations are done. Now, the Europeans have been messing around with us here. They played for time with Theresa, and they basically kicked it in the long grass with Boris, pointing fingers at him. What we need to do is point the finger back at them. Do you know that they treated East Germany when it was part of uh, the Soviet bloc better than they treat Northern Ireland now? Now, you're not going to tell me honestly that the standards of food or, you know, welfare in the Soviet bloc were better than they are in the UK today. We were in the EU six years ago. Come on, this is ridiculous. So we need to reset this debate. We need to actually be starting to make this argument in Germany, in France, in Italy, all over the place. Because people in Europe agree with us. People in Europe want to work with us. What we've got a problem with is Brussels. Now, I see in the papers some of the commentators are sort of <coughs> like they're agitating for a general election. Would you be going for a general election or would you be waiting until 2024? Look, not until we're ready. And I don't think we would be ready until 2024. Would, I don't think or we won't be. I, I would be astonished. Absolutely astonished. I mean... But you wouldn't crumble to the demands of some of the media no, wanting a general not. election. No, 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 no. Look, forgive me, S and Philip. You, you were both elected on the same mandate as I was to serve the communities in Tatton and Shipley and me in Tunbridge on a five-year mandate. That's what we were elected to do. We weren't elected to play politics with those election timetables. What we were elected to do was to deliver, and that's what we're going to do. So if I were, when I'm the leader, let's be positive, when, I, when, when I'm leading this great party and as Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, there is absolutely no need to go for an early election. What there is a need to do is to deliver. And that's why we need a clean start and actually return the government to serving our people. Who's your team? Have you got your team? I'm looking at them. <laughs> oh, see how he's winning. Oh, so those, see, he wants those votes. You see what he's course doing? I, do. I, know, I know, but by gaining our two votes, he's lost a load of others. If he's thinking, <laughs> about, a bit of, it. If he's thinking of involving me. But I take it what you said, you'd be happy to serve in the cabinet of any of the other remaining candidates in the contest. I mean, you know, I think there are some fantastic people who are running, and I think there are some fantastic people who could really make a huge 
presence felt in, in, in Cabinet now. You know, I think there are some really impressive people in our party. And if, I think, frankly, Labour have been letting us down. I mean, you just spoke about Rochdale, Telford again. That's a Labour council for, what, 40-odd years? You know, Labour are letting us down. The SNP are failing in hospitals and schools in Scotland. The Lib Dems, God knows where they are. They're all over the place. You know, we need a Conservative government. We need a Conservative victory in 2024. I think I'm best placed to deliver I, it. And I've lost my bet because I said that you, we could go, we we're going to do an interview without you mentioning that you were in the army and you did actually mention it when you referred to Penny Mordaunt. <laughs> oh, no, I said <laughs> I I've, lost, I've literally lost my, I've literally lost my, I can't I, believe. I said I but, wouldn't but, <laughs> but I've won the bet, so I'm happy. Everyone's You've happy. lost his vote, you might have got mine because yeah, 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 I, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I won the bet. Anyway, the best of luck on Monday. We wish you all the very best and thank, thank, you, you, for, thank you for joining us, it's Tom. It's a great pleasure we, to see you. We, we appreciate it.